Welcome. Welcome. To Shade, to Shade in the Shade City. In the city. I'm your girl, Trace. It's Nels. And today we're jumping into our review of, guys, we have stepped into a whole new pile of SHI. This, this sugar honey iced tea. Okay. This, this is one from my own personal collection that I like to watch. And you know, some of personal our, time. And now we're sharing it with y'all. Yes. Uh, some of our, you know, some of our uh, subscribers have been requesting that we cover uh, this, this sugar honey iced tea show. Um, and yes, so we are here for love during lockup. I believe it's like season five, episode one, but you can't tell from the titles. You don't know what's what, yeah. but I'm going to say it's season five, episode one. Um, so thank you guys for being here, joining us for another new show to add to the roster. If you have not already Shade Squad and all of our new viewers, please make sure that you hit that like button when you come in. And that subscribe button. And y'all. Let's get into it and let's unpack this sugar honey iced tea and let's get shade. Um, do we meet or do we, will we see and we meet? It, it's a first meeting for me. I don't think this is a repeat character. I think this is new. No, it's not a repeat character. Okay. Uh, so we meet Jay. Um, she's getting ready for a party and, uh, for her sister, they are very close. Um, they call themselves the Jardashians. Um, I thought that was kind of cute. Um, she's talking to her husband, Chris, who's incarcerated. Uh, she wasn't looking to fall for an inmate. Um, and thought it would just be cool to have a pen pal. Then she linked up with Chris, who was 30 and locked up for burglary and identity theft. He's um, 39. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, is he 39? Damn. And she's 33. Yeah, I did get 33. Did you did you get 33? I did because everybody is born in that year. <laughs> Everybody's 33. Right. Um, but she's apparently also You're 33. You're 33. Right. We just giving <laughs> everybody threes. Um, so she's also a she's a social media influencer. Um, she found him on the prison pen pal page. Uh, he said his eyes light up when he sees her. Um, and they got married seven months after they met. Now she's trying to get off the phone so she can finish preparing for her party for her sister Jessica. And her house is nice. It's real nice. It's real nice. Um, and he asked her to be available so they can talk. And she says that, um, you know, her friends show up and they're like complimenting her on her couch. And she's like, oh, yeah, Chris just bought it. And then we learn that Chris is rolling in the money. Um, he apparently is Native American and his tribe owns a casino. So he gets ten to twelve thousand dollars per month. Mm -hmm. um she said that he bought the house the car everything <laughs> okay they have a joint account and she has access to it all now her friends are curious if he has so much money why did he steal and i said that's a very said, good point. Ain't that a good damn question that is um but she doesn't give a damn because chris apparently had a meth problem and that's when he decided to break into someone's house um, he's locked up until 2024. So wait, um, let me. So so does that mean that when he was home, he was doing ten to twelve thousand dollars worth of meth a month, and still ran out of money and needed to break into someone's home? I don't know the price that for meth. Okay, I don't know. We don't know the asking prices. But I just assume that like street drugs like this are just super cheap. So I mean, that's a lot of meth. I would think if you're spending. Ten to twelve thousand dollars on meth, and then still need more money. That you. Have it depends to on how much meth you're doing. That's that's my point. That's that's a lot of. And uh, and not all. I, I mean, you know, the other stuff, the white snowflake stuff, that's expensive. Until you change its form, and then it gets cheap. 
I mean, I still think ten to twelve thousand dollars a month could handle a drug habit. That, listen, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't do drugs. I don't know. I don't know. Meth, meth is a hell of a drug. So um, now I want to see his teeth. Well, he can afford new teeth. Um, so yes, you got. It. Yeah. So he's locked up to twenty twenty four. Like I said, and um, yeah, he's been locked up seven times. Um, she thinks that she can fix him. Um, don't she, we all? <laughs> she I, when that came out her mouth, I said, "That don't sound stupid to you when you said it, because it sounds stupid to me hearing it." But okay. Uh, she thinks he's going to get out and they're going to start a family together. Chris is calling and she's not hearing his call. And Chris doesn't trust her and doesn't understand why she can't answer the call while she's at the party. Um, he then asks her if she's been drinking and she admits that she has. He tells her that that may be a problem if she can't answer her phone. We would have a problem. Um, let, me, let, let me tell you something. I'm answering every call every FaceTime. You funny. Can, you ain't gonna mess he, up the money. If he if he can send a text, I'm answering the text, okay? 10 to 12,000, he don't need nothing. Maybe he needs a few, uh, I, you know, couple, maybe out the 12, maybe he need two on his books, something, so he could be living good in there. You know what I'm saying? Boo, you got a house, a car, a camper, a side-by-side. -side. I don't even know what the hell a side-by-side -side is, okay? But you got it. And you live in Naples, Okay. I'm answering. Guess what? You know what? Y'all enjoy the party. I'll oh, so you going you gonna keep that phone attached to your hip? You got them right. People do. Listen, chicks, dudes, they do it for less, but for, for brokies. Oh yeah, that's true. Okay. Guess what? Guess what? Y'all enjoy the party. I'll be back in five to ten minutes. Let me handle this. Let me settle him down right quick. You know, say good night. You know, everything. Because basically, he paid for this party that I'm throwing for you right now. Okay, so I'll be back. Well. Well, you heard that, Jade. Don't open your bag. So uh, she tells him that the problem is him calling so damn much, and she hangs up the phone. Um, then all of Jade's family is obviously seriously concerned about their toxic relationship. Um, he is still calling her, and then when he can't get her, he starts calling all of her friends. It's giving serial. Can't say the second word. Um, you wouldn't have to be there. As long as the bag, she don't care if her life is in danger. Um, he says he has trust issues because he grew up seeing his mother being an exotic dancer. Um, and he feels that he's just seen so many examples of women, you know, shady women. So he has issues. You know? But what was crazy to me is he said that the dudes was being shady to her and she was being shady back. I think you saw a 50-50. This is how, you know. He saw a toxic relationship. Basically. Well, I, I don't think it was relationships, but he saw toxicity. Yes, he did. Um, and yeah, that's all I have for Jade and Chris. Um, I think that Jade is gonna f up her bag, but what I know is, but you know what? I don't. I don't think he thought about a prenup in jail. So I, even, so even if she does leave him, she's taking half of that, and I'm sure she's gonna. If I were her, I'm filing alimony. I'm never getting remarried. <laughs> I might have me a whole man, some more kids. I'm never getting remarried. I'm going to continue to collect that check. Yes, I guess she 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 got a point there. Yeah. Now, one thing that I did want to point out is her sister Jessica doesn't even think that she would stick around if he didn't have this type of money. Girl, I don't even, think so either. That's crazy. That's even more reason to answer the calls. Hello. Hello. Because you messing with the money. Okay, but you know she is worried about what's gonna happen when they um, when he get home and if this is already happening while he locked up. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be, it could be, it could be a lot. It could be a lot. Go ahead, hey, introduce her to our second fool. Who's our second fool? Letitia. Oh. Letitia is 36. She's a business owner and her husband Keith is 34 and is in jail for drug distribution. Um, now Letitia was getting her girls ready for school. She says she's a single mom and that single mom life is like female fight club. Girl. I know. Um, she gets a call from her husband Keith. She says she feels like she's been looking for love her entire life. 
And most of her past relationships have been with jackasses or leeches um, until she met Keith. I want to know how he's not a jackass or a leech. Maybe he's not a jackass. Because he had gold teeth. I don't hear that he's sending her no money. So how is he not a leech? But um, anyways, so she fell in love with him from the first picture as soon as she saw his gold teeth, like Tree said. And apparently he met Tish through a friend that, you know, had a girlfriend. And I guess she was a friend and a girlfriend. Trust me, I have friends that, you know, do this type of thing. And yeah, that's how it goes down. If it ain't the online thing. I would feel a way. Feel away what? Unless you were giving me a Chris, and even then I might feel a way that you as my friend. Girl, you would keep Chris for yourself. What's wrong with you? But <laughs> who's giving away a Chris? What the hell? But I would feel away? a way if you as my friend view me like you think you that's who you want to set me up with. Sometimes it don't even happen that way. Sometimes you could be on the phone. And, you know, what you call, I, trust me, I know somebody, probably shouldn't say too much because we know each other. <laughs> she know me, well, I know. Gotta, we got to love during lockup. We know each other. And she she literally, like, you know, will be right by her friend listening to the call and, you know, ask if they have a friend. Sometimes it's not always the people in jail trying to, get with somebody on the outside sometimes sometimes that people on the outside trying to get with people on the inside it'd be like that sometimes if standards were not a thing but go ahead sometimes you know they miss having kids or something i don't know so two months after they met he proposed over the phone while she was in the walgreens parking lot now this brings me back to 90 day when she at least had enough standards to say this is not a real proposal over the phone but <clears throat> that's neither here nor there she said it's not easy being married and not having sex so she told him you know let it hang okay the next time she went to take pictures so she could reach back and feel that thing and see what he was working with and needless to say she was not disappointed you know what but just because well, they say, you know, it's not about the size of the ship. It's the motion of the ocean. So you better hope that the boat is rocking. I think I will feel some type of way that you're even capable. I'm not, I'm not going to say it. Um, so basically she has her own business called Boss Tax and Accounting Services. So she gets to her office and called a staff meeting to make this big, huge announcement that her husband will also be one of their bosses from behind bars. Her employee, Tasia, um, is really not feeling it. And she noticed the side eye. And she said, if she don't know, um, she said she don't know how she feel about it. And basically being bossed around by somebody in prison. Yet, homegirl told her, um, if you have a problem with it, you might want to put in your resignation letter. I said, oh. Right. That's how we doing it. I said that was a little strong. Right. Basically get on board or get out. Um, so she feels like this is a great opportunity because she wants to do an outreach program with the inmates. First of all, she's talking about how they get paid 17 cents and 29 cents in jail. What type of cut do you get off of that? She's giving back to her community. <laughs> It's okay. okay to, it's okay to give back, Nels. It's okay to give back. She, I think she's already given enough. <laughs> she, she, for damn sure, ain't getting nothing. Well, um, no, didn't he had just he didn't he had just bought bought her something, or she was like, "Oh, thank you, I love the something or another." Oh, the teddy bear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe flowers. Maybe. I need houses and cars and side by sides. I need to know what a side by side is. You stupid. <laughs> I need somebody to get me a side by side. <laughs> uh, so basically, you know, she says, yeah, you know, he's in jail, but it was for selling drugs. So clearly he's business minded. Girl, if you don't shut the hell up, we will have several seats. That, when I, she said that, I said, girl, bye. And then, not even that, with his history, 
the one thing that popped in my head, are you not concerned that he might steal from you? Not stealing, they're married. We're exactly. Wrong row, wrong row, Letitia. Um, and she feels like, you know, they don't know him like she does. He's a good man. And he was just providing for his family, although it was illegally. So after the grand news, she realizes her team was shaken up a bit. So she decided to take them out. And um, her staff brings- And can I just tell y'all, this is toxic behavior. I right. used to, I used to have a boss like that. And they would talk- to you the whole eight hours or 10 hours you're there and then take you out for drinks and when i tell you i fell for it every time i was about to say i have to turn it down no, do no. It. i i kept going i kept going every day <laughs> knowing i couldn't stand i was so upset but i was like what for drinks say but i was gonna go for my look my sometimes that was dinner look i was going for my free apps and my drinks I know you are. <laughs> hey, you probably missed not a one. <laughs> but look, um, be bar be barely be talking to him, but I'm going to eat this food. <laughs> Take this drink. Look, when the check comes, uh-uh, pass it on. Pass yeah. it on. <laughs> um, so her staff brings up that one of her employees used to date her husband, but apparently she knows. Does she no. have to act like she does? Not. Oh, yes. Yeah, I don't think she did. Or she played it off. All she cared about. Like she said, so she was like, she was like, yeah, we used to talk. She's like, did you, my husband? Of course, that's where they left it because we want to know the tea. Because you plan on bringing this man in the office. You plan on bringing this man around her. This ain't no just couple dates, like, you know, Marlo, like one date or something. This is like, they used to talk. You know what? I'm thinking this is how you find the rich men. This has got to be it. This is how you find the rich men. You go to prison and they basically find you. Because out here in the world, we got a bunch of brokies. Oh, okay. But we got a bunch of these dusties. past few seasons. Watch, yes. Watching these past few seasons. There's been a lot of rags to riches stories. Again, Nels is more acclimated in the love after during lockup series. Um, so she can probably give you history and tell you better than and it probably is true. Um, I just I, I ain't playing with the I ain't playing with the prison pen. I'm just yeah, I'm just not trying to go to jail to get a to get a you know a rich bay, but let somebody come up to me and tell but me. But wasn't that one guy in prison and then he messed and messed around and found a rich woman and left his wife and he didn't he like become an actor or something or he but Oh, he you're talking about um yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um he was actually on um And that's so terrible. Marriage, marriage boot camp or something, I think. So yeah. you let the wife that you had that held you down while you was locked up girl and then some rich it's woman prison, it's prison talk it's about the money. It's but he really went money. with the money. He didn't like prison talk. You're just supposed to get the money while you're in prison. No, he yeah, left. No, no, no. Oh no, no, girl. What did I just say? Out here in the world, it's a bunch of brokies. Why would you <laughs> only go with the money while you're locked up and then come out to the world to a bunch of brokies? Because you got a woman that held you down and stayed loyal while you was basically cheating. Now this is. It. <laughs> Oh, so you saying the woman that held him down was a brokey? No, I, you're awful. I'm I'm saying there's no loyalty. That's all right. I'm saying there's no loyalty. Um, so let's let's get over to yeah. Me. The woman that held him down was a brokey, and he left the brokey for the woman with the money. She ain't because he didn't want to come home broke. He ain't sugar honey iced tea, y'all. He so, didn't want to come home broke. That's what that was. So we meet Got um, all the time. Y'all terrible. So we meet our next um cast member, Renika. She is 34. Oh, uh she has several eyelash vending machines and makes about 20,000 from each of them. I said, okay, girl, I need to get in the eyelash business, even though I don't wear them because I need to sell some lashes. Because you know, you see, 
the natural is naturally it's eyelashing it's just saying sure. she can't sell no lashes i can sell lashes yeah oh, yeah yeah because i can't even put them on my eyelashes let me, let me put them on. in a vending machine hmm. but this helps support her two daughters and she wraps on the side okay um it was giving I, I don't know what to give it. I don't, I'm trying to, I, I don't want to, cause I actually like Amaretta, but because she's like, no, no, no. That's why I said, I don't want to, I don't want to compare her to that because Amaretta is actually a good artist, but I'm saying like- And cute and fly. Right, and but I'm, I'm talking about like the level, like, because Amaretta is not like A, B list. We know I, who Amaretta is. The other celebrities know who, no, nobody know who Renika is. Y'all better stop. Y'all better stop sleeping over Nika. Know, celebrities know who Armoretta <laughs> is. Armoretta has songs that we can actually sing. Have you ever heard any of Renika's songs? That's not a name. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you're trying to say Armoretta's not an A-list, maybe a B or C, we going to give Renika a G. <laughs> no she's down there in the alphabet but she's like like okay no 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 you know what i got a good one she's giving like you better name somebody else she's giving sexy red no no you gotta <laughs> name somebody else. girl you better make up a name <laughs> no because sexy red ain't sexy um but she got songs that are on the radio that we know but we don't want to hear them that's not the point <laughs> the point is um, Sexy Red is making money off of her song. Somebody's yeah. Concert. Somebody, somebody's listening to the foolish. She's taking pictures with Drake. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what I couldn't do, y'all, wait till I put up the pictures. For me, it was the thick baby hairs, blonde baby hairs from her wig on her forehead. It was it was crazy. I don't know if it was blonde or light green or highlighter yellow. I don't know what the hell that was. That you did say she looked like a highlighter. Um, so she tells her colleague that she's moving to Atlanta for her man Asanta. Um, she says she fell in love from their first video call. She said they talk eight times a day. Um, and Asanta is locked up for robbery and has been for four years. Uh, she says she's packing up her kids. Her homegirl asked her what she plans to do, and um. She isn't sure, but she plans to figure it out. So first of all, let's 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 talk about the fact she's packing up her kids. Well, the, you know, another... I never, I, you know, I never. Even when we see like ninety day, I never agree with you involving kids in your foolishness. She is I packing never up agree her with kids, that. moving them to another state where she knows no one, not even this man, because she ain't never even met him in person. Can you at least take a flight to go meet the man first? She said. This is going to be married at first sight. We ain't doing no- Girl, if you make it 20 stacks, 20 stacks per vending machine, you can afford a flight to go down there for a weekend or whatever. Oh, and she takes her mama. Man. Not only the kids, her mama as well. She's taking her mama too? Mm-hmm. She need a babysitter. So, um, yeah, no. Then her friend is trying to advise her that she doesn't really know him. She understands that they were gonna they're gonna go through things, but she's excited about him coming home in a few days. And he already said he's gonna put a ring on it. That's what she said. So Renika meets with her father, Robert. Um, he asks her what's been going on. She tells him about the music and her business, but is reluctant to tell him that she's moving to Atlanta. So uh, she finally spills the beans to her father and he's a little bit in shock and a little bit hurt because he apparently was locked up for 18 years for drug trafficking. Mm -hmm. um, and is, I guess it sounds like just came home not too long ago. So he really hasn't had that much time with Renika and his other kids. Um, and basically he's, you know, trying to make up for lost time. So he's obviously upset that she's- I, I, See, when, when, parent, when parents say that shit, that don't, that don't move me at all. Her. you make it up for the time that you lost right you lost. and if i don't want to make it up with you then that's that's my and, decision and basically that's where renika was coming from because he was like well how are you gonna go move to be with some man that's in jail and he's an ex-con and she's like well so are you so how are we gonna i, I don't understand my, listen there's so many things wrong with this okay she's talking about taking care of the man for four months when he come home but she's already taking care of him by sending him two thousand twenty five hundred dollars a month already Oh, here come nails for the read. 
Then you pack <laughs> up your kids and your mama. I didn't even realize it was her mama too. Her mama gone. Okay. And then the lady had a point because your businesses are up here, ma'am. Who the hell gonna be running that? Who gonna hell? Who? How you gonna make this? Nobody. Who? <laughs> how you gonna run this twenty stacks? Uh, for your vending machines, lady. And 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 you talking about getting a job out there, ma'am. This is just giving failure. This is just giving falling on your face. Just, oh God, I have to say it. it, it it's gonna be it's gonna be bad. And based off the previews for the upcoming season, it's gonna be bad for her. You don't know nothing about this man. You ain't hit up no ex girlfriend. No nothing. Doesn't know anything about his past relationships. If he was involved in DV, um, if he was involved in DL, she don't know. She don't know nothing. She mm -hmm. don't even know what he looked like in person. For real, them pictures and whatever the hell she got could be old as hell. He could be a whole... I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> but he could look totally different. I don't know. She just... She's, she's doing a lot. And I'm just here for the entertainment of it all, really. Yeah, no. Renika is uh, kind of a fool. So, Brittany is 22. Um, she's a student and a server. Kirok is 25 and he's in jail for robbery. A lot of robbers in the house. Today. It sounds like it was a match made in heaven, to be quite honest with you. Um, Brittany met Kirok when they were both in prison. Now, if y'all are confused, trust me, I was when she said it too. But we'll get to that. I was so, like, they have co-ed prisons now? As far as I know, you only see them when they walk past. That's well. That's that's what it gave me was that she. But I didn't think you actually get to meet and stuff. Like it's not a meet and greet type. Right. Of you know. Anyways, so they over here, I'll have an have an inmate socials. It sound like they just. So, girl, <laughs> you need to go back a few seasons. You, you I guess girl. so. <laughs> um. So she was on the phone with him, telling him how people don't see them as normal the way they see each other and you know he reassured her it doesn't really matter what anyone thinks it's them basically against the world so she's in her cosmetology class and explaining that um she can't wait to work with real clients because you know she used to do hair and makeup while she was in jail and she, she was up in that class telling all her business all, all her business all her, but you know like she, even the clients were sitting there they was like i just wanted to pay my money like not pay my money um, and they, I, I, they pay. It's like a little cheap discount or whatever. They get. They, they get. Isn't it like twenty five dollars or something? Yeah, it's super, it's super duper cheap. Right. But because it's so cheap, they gonna they they have to sit there and take it and take as long as it's gonna take whatever. But um, <clears throat> basically, she said she was super blessed because her parents made sure she had all the equipment that she needed. She was basically like jail rich, prison rich. Um, and basically, they want to know why the hell was her cute little ass in max security. Mm -hmm. apparently it was for armed robbery match made in heaven apparently birds of a feather flock um, together right she helped the ex-boyfriend set somebody up um she said she was locked up for three years but she's been out and so she years. has a history of making bad choices with men okay um she's been out now for six months um she said that she realized um while she was in there that she wanted to make some changes and feels that, you know, uh, jail took a lot of her youth. So her classmates are proud of her because um, she's made such great progress and she credits it all to Kirok. Now, they're confused as to how her and her fiance were locked up together. I said, ain't that a damn good question? Because I was mm -hmm. confused too. She said when she was locked up, she was on her way to medical and with her friend and heard somebody scream her name. Brittany! <laughs> know your name too? How the hell they work? Yeah. Now, then she says she saw this short, good looking, dark skinned man with these beautiful white teeth coming towards her. So they started talking and rest is history. Now she's waiting for him to come home in three months. But apparently Kirok is transgender. Mm. That is how they met in jail. I said, oh, okay. 
It's making a lot of sense now. Right. It's all coming together. Yes. Um, now, he says that he came out when he was 16, and it was because his father didn't tolerate any of that in the household. He's super anti-gay. And he started his transition while he was in there about 18 months ago, and now he feels like himself. And she said it's her first transgender relationship, but he's more of a man than any other man she's ever been with. So the instructor's asking all the juicy questions. She like, so was I able to get down in there? She said, yeah, girl. If we on this, if we on the same wing, all we got to do is put something over the little window. Mm hmm. She like, oh, that's juicy. <laughs> then she shows off the promise ring that he got her. Little nosy instructor again was like, girl, how much did that cost? Okay, she I'm said about four thousand. About four thousand. Apparently, he invests his money in businesses, and he also has some sugar mamas. But she don't care about the sugar moms because she said all the money going to her anyway. We saw what we just had a conversation about a man with a sugar mom. And I wouldn't even call her a sugar mama, but getting, you know, attention from outside the jail. And then he left the one that he was with, the, the brokey. I think it's different having multiple versus having one in particular. I'm sure it starts. I'm sure it starts with multiple, and then you usually went windle it down to the one that's giving you the most money. I'm just saying. Um. Okay. I I see what you're saying, but I would I I would think that maybe it's different in this case. I was gonna say because they were in there together. Um. It's possible they made a genuine connection. I don't know, girl. I don't know. You know. Okay, um, not you out here shooting for the stars for real. I, listen, I'm 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 believing Brittany on this one. Okay, now her instructor tells her girl, she knows she's in love, but still keep your guard up. Okay, because mm -hmm. you know what jail talk is. Mm -hmm. And she feels like that her situation is different because they were in there together. And see, this is what I'm saying. I'm trying to believe. I'm trying to believe in what Brittany's saying. She like, if you think he- I love what the instructor home. said, okay? But she said, when you marry somebody, that's never the person you divorce. That's true. So, yeah. The person you marry is not the person you divorce. That is so true. So we then meet Andy. He is 44. He is a former police officer. And Brittany- who is 36 and locked up for drug possession. Now, Andy was a police no, officer. Mm -hmm. Now, Andy was a police officer for 13 years. He met Brittany through an inmate pen pal website. Uh, he changed careers and got into transportation and said he got lonely on the road. And, uh, you know, Brittany was just so beautiful and, you know, charming. And I don't know. Brittany says that she's an addict. And that's why she was arrested for possession. I want to show some type of way more about the ones that are addicts. Because they're super unpredictable when they come home. Right. Um, and that's what I was thought was weird. And you're bringing her around your kid. Uh, we'll get there. Even even, this, even with Chris, him being a, um old addict um, doing meth. That's, that's concerning. Right. He might burn your house down, blow it up, trying to, anyway. So... Now, she says that she's actually surprised that they had such a good connection when they met in person. His friend questions how much she's gained financially. And he says that he spent about $6,000 on her so far. We know that's just the start of the bill. It's going to kick, the tab is going to continue to run up. Um, now, Andy shares that he went through a bad divorce. His ex-wife ended up moving in with someone who was a drug addict and then had her own battle with addiction. I said, so you continue to make bad choices as well with the women that you deal with. So, and I'm not saying because his wife developed an addiction, I'm saying for him to then go and find another addict on a prison website after that's it's just, you know, um, what do they say? Um, people who do the same things over and over expecting different results um, are insane. Right. So now um, 
Yeah, basically because of this, he ended up getting custody of his kids, and that's why he had to change his career because he could no longer work the night shift. Um, his friend is concerned, uh, basically what he's gotten himself into, and he runs a background check on her. He finds that she has small claims against her, but nothing too serious, but then also sees that she's had over 25 cohabitants, um, a lot of them male. And she's moved around a lot and not stayed in the same places. And so he thinks that that's kind of a red flag. And yeah, no, I just even lived out the state before. Right. Um, and he says that he loves her and that love is blind. So his friends, you know, his friend warns him about the possibility of Brittany basically just taking advantage of him. And, you know, he said, I'm just going to take that chance. So then he actually sits down for a meal with, I believe it was his son, Mm -hmm. um and his son is actually clowning him uh for being with an inmate um and he said the only law he plans to enforce is the law of attraction it was a real weird conversation um and then he starts sharing how he can't wait to play cops and druggies when she gets out and that's what i have for our good fool andy so thank you guys for again having me walk into this pile <laughs> Of sugar, sugar honey, honey iced tea. tea. Um, I will say it is entertaining. Um, it kept me engaged. I definitely was not bored at any moment. Um, <laughs> so I definitely think that I'm going to enjoy reviewing it. But uh, I didn't think it could get any worse than 90 Day Fiance. And y'all showed me that it has. Um, so thank you. Thank you, guys. If you have not already. And I don't know if you saw, we are 10 away from five, uh, five honey. So please please help us out and help us continue to get there make sure that you're sharing us but first of all before you leave us make sure you hit the like button you comment you subscribe and you hit the notification bell and make sure that you're following us on all the platforms our tiktok our twitter our facebook and our ig and yeah we've been growing on there too so i appreciate the love everywhere on all the different platforms you know that's like a thing in the content creator world you could be doing great somewhere else and the other ones be like zero followers so we definitely appreciate you following us across all the platforms and yeah y'all we will catch you in you a like couple us. days you really like us. you really like us <laughs> um but yeah y'all we will catch you uh in another few days for episode two of season five of love during lockup have a good night Bye-bye. Good night.